the 2025 Genesis GV80 SUV and the SUV Coupe. A little while ago, they came out with the Coupe concept vehicle, but this is the actual production ready product. And leave your thoughts below regarding the looks of this new GV80 Coupe and of course the refreshed uh, SUV as well. I'm personally a huge fan of it. Obviously the Coupe is gonna be not as practical as the SUV, especially in regard to rear headroom and the maximum cargo capacity, but I just don't care. It looks so cool that uh, I don't mind it. Uh, this is a little bit more subtle, similar to the Porsche Cayenne Coupe. That's probably why I like it so much. But in general, the GV80 gets its refresh now after three years of production. We have a new double layered grill, and we of course have the really slim two line headlamps, and that's the MLA micro lens array technology. That's why it's able to be so slim. We also have larger air intakes and a wide skid plate design on the front bumper. They've also introduced two new wheel designs and I have to admit all the wheels look great on this new GV80 and the coupe is gonna come exclusively with 20 and 22 inch wheels. Regarding the engine, they've unveiled three engine options here. The base model SUVs, they're gonna come with a two and a half liter turbo four cylinder with 300 horsepower. Then you can step up to the twin turbo three and a half liter V6 with 375 horsepower. And now they've also brought in the twin turbo three and a half V6 with the 48 volt electric supercharger that makes 409 horsepower. And this is what I tested with the Genesis G90, but I'll be honest with you, it wasn't a drastic difference compared to the regular three and a half liter V6. It's cool, it's seamless, it works fine, it's smooth. And this is gonna be one of the engine options that's going to come with the GV80 Coupe. There's supposed to be two powertrain options, but Genesis only unveiled one, the electric supercharged uh, twin turbo V6 with that 409 horsepower I spoke about. But the other option, they haven't unveiled it yet. It could be a plug-in hybrid, a regular hybrid, or even a full EV, we don't know. But regarding the regular SUV with the four cylinder and the V6, currently a 2024 model year is available with rear wheel drive or all wheel drive for the four cylinders and the V6 came with all wheel drive as standard. We don't know what they're gonna do for the 2025 model year. It could be the same configuration. And as of right now, all of these engine options, they were made into an eight speed automatic transmission, which will most likely carry over for 2025. Now the interior also gets redesigned. They've combined the gauge cluster and the infotainment screen into one large 27 inch display, similar to the BMW iDrive 8 setup. However, unlike the BMW, we have a separate screen that controls the HVAC. And I have to admit, I don't really mind uh, the Genesis approach to the HVAC controls, they did a pretty good job. Despite not using physical buttons, it is pretty easy to use and not really super distracting. We have a new crystal-like material for the gear shifter. The wireless charging pad is now supposed to be a little bit more visible uh, when it's in its charging pad. And uh, that's fine, I guess that's what most people wanted. And you also get a larger cup holder along with knobs for your volume and your tuning. When you go with the coupe models, the interior gets some more carbon fiber-esque trims and a unique seat pattern as well to differentiate it from the regular GV80 SUV. And you also get some metal accents for the throttle and brake pedals. We don't have the official pricing yet for these SUVs. However, the current GV80 starts at a little over 58 grand for the four cylinder rear wheel drive and a little over 65 grand for the twin turbo V6 SUV. And these prices include destination, and I'm sure for 2025, these prices will definitely go up, and you should certainly expect to pay a premium for the coupe, I'm assuming three to five grand more than a regular SUV. So yeah, not a cheap product and not the insane value proposition that this once was. However, people really love the Genesis brand now because they make cool, unique vehicles like this with some real character to differentiate it from the German rivals. Their attention to detail is spot on and their designs are on point. So leave your thoughts below in the comment section. Is this a vehicle that you like and would you consider purchasing this? Do you have a deposit down 
for these vehicles. If you're an owner of a current Genesis product, definitely leave your thoughts below. And many people have left their thoughts and they're not too pleased with the ownership experience. I'm not going to lie. If you don't have a good dealership to work with, uh, these Genesis products can suck to own because yeah, they got a juicy warranty and all that, you know, 10 years, 100K miles, easily the best warranty in the luxury car segment, along with three years of free maintenance. That's all fine on paper, but there was an individual uh, with the new G80 who had a terrible experience in the Houston, Texas area with their dealerships. Every time he had an issue with the vehicle, they were like clueless and didn't take care of him. And that's a shame because the way the Genesis warranty and maintenance system was supposed to work is a person would come by, pick up your vehicle, drop off a loaner, and you never had to go to the dealership. After they finish working on your car, they bring the car to you, and then they take the loaner car away. That was the way it was supposed to work out. And I guess that hasn't been the case. I'm not sure. In North Carolina, at least, we have some really good Genesis dealerships to work with. So kind of lucked out there. But if you're interested in these vehicles, just do a thorough Google search in your area to see how the Genesis dealerships are and what kind of reviews they have on Google to see if this purchase will make sense. For you. But thank you so much for watching. Take care and goodbye.